Hi guys, this is Wade from Wade's Orchids and we're going to take a look at some catacetums and uh, related genre. Right now I, I only have two of them that are in bloom. The one that you're looking at here is a first bloom hybrid of catacetum, uh, I'm sorry, Fred Clark Air Saturn Sky crossed with catacetum Susan Fuchs Burgundy Chips. Uh, this is a, a really nice thing. Uh, I'm, I was hoping for the, the background color to, to pop out a little bit more, but that's okay. We've got some incredible burgundy color there, and uh, especially in the lip. That lip, uh, the inside of the lip is really shiny. Just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And, uh, we're going to uh, also take a look at uh, this one right here, which is here. Let me come up here, see if I can find something that's just about right here. And I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit more for you. Uh, there we go. That's uh, Fred Clark era After Dark variety SVL, which has got an FCC from the AOS. Uh, that's a first class certificate for those that you don't know, uh, which is the highest award that can be given to a flower quality. Uh, and it's an incredible thing. Uh, right now, this is uh, beginning of December and none of these plants are getting any water. I'm going to back up now and, and show you the plants. And uh, you can see that uh, there, there are quite a few leaves. Also, I want to emphasize that I'm getting 53 flowers on this. Uh, there were, I think, two of them that, that aborted, but uh, 53 flowers on one bulb, three spikes. That's just, it just knocks my socks off. <laughs> uh, and people have asked me a little bit on how I grow these. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's, it's in a plastic pot. And what I do is I use uh, sphagnum moss and uh, fill it in halfway with sphagnum moss. And then I put a, a good amount of time-release fertilizer. And the kind that I use is a uh, kind with uh, micronutrients in it and it is uh it's osmocote and if you look for the osmocote that's in a uh, pink jar or jar with a pink top on you'll get the right one and i i put a good amount in and then fill in the rest away and put in some more on top these things are incredibly heavy feeders uh, to get the amount of flowers that you see right here we have got to just get in a massive amount of nutrients inside that bulb there. And that bulb just grows in one season to that. And so you, you can see that it's just a massive amount of nutrients that it has to absorb in order to do this. Also, during active growth, I keep, that, I keep it very, very moist, sometimes to the point of being wet. Okay, uh, now I have thought about using uh, something like uh, this pot here, uh, which you can buy at your garden stores and that. Uh, right now, as I think you can see that it's in a, uh, well, it's, it's in a four inch plastic pot that's sitting in a, a six inch clay pot and that's sitting in the, that plastic pot. But it, uh, what I want to emphasize is this pot has uh, a water reserve in the base of it that will keep a little bit of extra water in it for it to absorb. 
and I'm, I'm really thinking about starting to use something like that with these to make sure that they can keep a good amount of water intake going. Uh, but that is uh, in the past. Like I said, it's December. None of these are getting any water. I've talked to a couple of people who said that at this point, they actually cut off the leaves. I haven't done that yet. Uh, and I want to back up here and I'm going to show you a couple other plants that have gotten uh, pretty dormant. Uh, right next to this here is, uh, it's not a graveyard actually. <laughs> I'm going to scoot around the camera here so you can see me and uh, I'll show you a couple of things. Uh, here's, here's one. This is uh, one that, that already bloomed for me. Uh, this is a, a Bella Vista Sangria cross with Chuck Taylor, which is named, but I don't really know what, what the, the name of it is off the top of my head. But it sent out two spikes. And uh, you might see it's wet here, but that's just uh, some splash from when I watered. Uh, most of the plants here, uh, especially uh, the ones in the three inch pots, were ones that, that I have gotten this year from Fred Clark at Sus Sunset Valley Orchids. And these, this is the way that you want to see them around this time of year. Uh, the, the leaves have fallen off. There's no water being applied. Let me pull this out here if I can. There we go. Uh, and uh, this is dry in here. The roots are dead. Okay, the, the roots only last one season. If you feel these roots, uh, you'll feel that they're starting to get soft. These, these have not softened up completely yet, but uh, they will, the bulbs will absorb the moisture that, that is on the roots, or in the roots rather. And uh, it will go really very completely dormant. And uh, some, some have asked me uh, what to do if a plant is starting to put out a new growth and what I like to do is follow the growth of, of the main bulb and uh, let that tell you uh, what to do. I'm going to grab one here. Here's one that, uh, that I got this year again from Sunset Valley Orchids and you can see it started putting out a new growth here. And what I have done is followed the growth pattern of, of the uh, main bulb and it is not getting any more water. Uh, these leaves, th this has been, this is going into dormancy fairly late. Um, and I, I think what's happening here, if, if you look closely, you can see that this has grown a little bit and it's put out, it's putting out a little bulb down here. Um, and it will send out another growth in the spring. So that's pretty much how we deal with things like this. So when, when the main part goes dormant, it goes dormant, okay? And that's what you follow. And like I said, if you want to, you can cut these leaves off. Um, right now, they, they are starting to uh, become fairly ineffective. And that's pretty much it until spring. You want to keep them dry, fairly cool. Uh, this keeps, the greenhouse has about 55 to 57 degree nights. And uh, sitting on the cinder block here, it will probably get even a little cooler, probably about 50 degrees. And I'm just going to uh, watch them. I, some people lay them over. I don't like to do that because then when the new growth starts, it wants to grow at a 90 degree angle to the pot. But um, I, I keep them upright. No water until the new top growth it's probably about four or five inches tall and there's a fair number of roots that are two or three inches long. Um, then 
then it can start to absorb water. Remember, if, if there are not enough roots to absorb water, they, it makes no sense to water it. Okay, so that, that's what we go by. The whole thing is designed to uh, make use of what the roots can absorb. Uh, these things can rot very easily when it's getting uh, both when it's first starting to grow and when it's trying to go dormant. Okay, you have to be very careful about that. Other than that, they're a pretty easy growing plant. Uh, give them a good amount of light. I give them uh, light about, um, about like Catalia light. Uh, they'll take anything from Oncidium on up. Uh, if you want to get the uh, uh, female flowers, uh, these, these are male flowers here. If you look, you can uh, see there's a, sp a spur right here that, that will trigger the pollenia uh, to eject. And, and it just, it, it'll just really grab onto anything that it hits. It, it's remarkable. Uh, when you get to the Fred Clark areas, like this here, uh, you can see the flowers are what we call, uh, I call perfect, uh, which means that uh, they, they have both male and female parts. But with the catacetums, you want to, if you are trying to get female uh, flowers, one of the ways to do that is to give it very high light. And that, that tends to create the female flowers. So uh, that's about it with this. Uh, and if you have any questions, please let me know. They're a wonderful thing. They make a good thing to grow for people without greenhouses because uh, the only time that they are really going strong is during the warmer weather. And when it starts getting cool, you can just bring them inside and enjoy the flowers and then let them go dormant, cut the leaves off. One thing that you have to watch out for is spider mites. Uh, An insecticidal soap is really good to use for uh, people that grow in the home and it's a safe thing to use. You have to hit the spider mites on a repeated basis. So that means at least three treatments uh, I would say about four or five days apart. And you have to make sure that you get the undersides of the leaves as well as in between, and then allow that to dry. In the summertime, that's not a problem. Um, but you, you really want to stay on top of these for spider mites. Another thing is uh, slugs will go after the developing flower spikes and they will just chew them up and make supper for, out of them. Uh, so you have to be aware of, of any type of slug activity and take care of them. Uh, best way i found to take care of slugs is to check every night if you notice any evidence, in other words, the slime trails and that, uh, and check underneath the, the leaves and, and that sort of thing and find them and pick them off. When there are flowers going, uh, they will go after the flowers more than they will go after any slug bait that I have found. So it's, it's a nasty, nasty little thing and uh, you just have to keep on top of them. So if you, again, if you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, this is Way from Wade's Orchids. Try one of these out if you don't have them. They're just wonderful things, very rewarding. So, till the next time, I wish you happy growing and we will see you. Bye bye.